Hello and welcome to this Year 11 webinar and there are three key learning aims that I hope we can cover. Firstly, I hope that we can under the, un, understand the marking criteria for narrative writing. So paper one, question five or section B is all about story writing and descriptive writing, fiction writing. So we're, we're going, to, going to look at the marking criteria. Then we're going to talk about effective characterization and we're going to talk about the narrative arc effective structure. Now, obviously this comes with a warning that although we're making sure that you understand how to secure grade four, you have to remember that grade four is a notional grade. So hopefully it will be helpful, but it's not in stone what a grade four looks like because the exam boards decide what grade four is every year. We're looking at a specific assignment and the assignment is, write a story about a journey. So first of all, let's talk about what grade four actually means. Grade four for a candidate means that generally you are interesting, generally you are relevant, and usually overall your writing is clear. A grade four candidate is someone who plans their work, who writes and who checks to, to make sure that everything is there, it's interesting, it's relevant, and it's clear communication overall. Roughly in the past few years, grade four for paper one, question five, section B, has been roughly, very roughly, around 53% or 21 out of 40 which means in terms of the marking criteria, we're looking at a high level two or a low level three. But obviously that comes with a warning because remember exam grades are notional. That means that when the exams are done, the exam board set the grades and they set the criteria and the grade boundaries. So just trying to make sure that you understand the kinds of things that you're going to do to get the grade four. So when we look at the mark scheme, we realize that there are two sections in the mark scheme. The first one is for content and organization. For, so for story writing at grade four, you are working here at the top of level two and the bottom of level three around that kind of grade. So you're looking at securing 13, 14, 15, something like that for your writing. That means that for your story, it's going to be generally a story with a main character, maybe two main characters. It's going to be interesting. Generally, the vocabulary is going to be used for effect. Um, you're not going to be trying to write boring words and you're going to try and use some linguistic devices. So even though it's a story, there'll be description, there'll be simile, similes, adjectives and adverbs. You're also going to think about structural features, including things like flashbacks to help your readers. And then also the, the writing is going to be connected and engaging. So you'll be using connectives and helping the readers to follow where you're going. The second part of the mark scheme is what I call VSPAG or technical accuracy. So for the grade four, very roughly, you're working around a level two, perhaps the top of the level two, you're going to have control over punctuation, which means you're going to try and use a different a range of punctuation, full stops, question marks, exclamation marks, commas, apostrophes, range of punctuation fairly accurately. You're going to try and do different sentence forms and you're going to try and make sure that your spelling and vocabulary are interesting and varied and accurate. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail for this specific assignment about writing story for a journey. So your communication will be clear. You'll have a protagonist, you'll have key events. It may lack a bit of relevance because you get a bit stuck you may not always think about the journey the journey might not be a main feature but you're definitely going to have clear communication overall remember the advice i would give is that you'd have one or two protagonist main characters for your appropriateness make sure that you don't include gruesome content don't include things that you've seen perhaps in horror films or you've watched or played perhaps in violent video games it's not appropriate for narrative writing and the examiners don't want to see it so make sure for the grade four it's appropriate 
Vocabulary for grade four is strong, it's interesting, it's descriptive. You might write about setting fluffy halos of cloud circle the polished moon. Each word is you're trying to choose it for effect. And then engagement and structure, you're having a chain of different events that lead somehow to change. You start somewhere with a story, you have a chain of different events that the character goes through and somehow things are different or improved or worse by the end. Thinking about VSPAG, make sure, because vocabulary is marked twice, that your vocabulary isn't childish. Don't use words like little or mean or nasty. It's going to be difficult to secure a grade four if you use those. So you might use miniature, you might use unkind, or you might use um, a different word there for nasty, spiteful. You're thinking about spelling, make sure that the common mistakes for your story writing are really they're accurate. So words like where and were and we're, make sure that they are spelled accurately. Where is about location, it's a here word. Were is about we were, not we was, we were. So you've got the W-E-R-E, -E, no H. And then we're is where the apostrophe is been taken out. The same with words like done and down. Make sure that those kind of common spellings are accurate because I know for some students they find it difficult to secure those spellings and to secure that grade four. Punctuation at grade four for your writing, for your story, will be really the focus on end punctuation, questions, exclamations, the ellipsis or the dot, dot, dot. You use some speech or dialogue accurately and then full stops. And then sentences for grade four. Think about a variety of sentences. You'd have strong sentence with an exclamation, never. You'd have a ask question or an interrogative, a question, ask sentence. Could he, could he be deceiving her? You'd have an imperative, which is a bossy verb, command, wait. And then you might have a list. Everyone was tied up. Uncle Joe in his red velvet tie. Auntie Jean in her bright pink high heels, the vicar in his, in his crisp white robe and her dearest father. So we might have a list there. And why is it important that you think about VSPAG? Because it's worth 40% of the overall grade out of 16, out of 40 marks, it's worth 16. So you'll try and make sure it's there. So you're thinking about what the examiner wants and the marking criteria, but you're also thinking about your main character. You're making sure that your character or characters are interesting. Now, effective characterization is linked with your overall purpose. That means what you want your story to be like is going to be linked with what your characters are like. I would suggest that you've got three main purposes. You've got excite, thrill and entertain, which is just to make your story really exciting. You've got disquiet, disturb and unsettle, so it's, your story is becoming unsettling. And then presenting and exploring serious issues for readers. So those would be the three main purposes. So try and make sure that your characterization links with your purpose. If you're gonna write a story for your journey about something that's exciting and thrilling and entertaining for readers, make sure that your main, your main character is athletic or daring or fun-loving or risk-taking like some kind of captain or a pilot or a footballer. If you're going to write something that's a bit more disturbing or unsettling, think about your main character being unkind, cruel, impatient, maybe a boss who's cruel, maybe someone who cheats, a criminal, maybe even a teacher who's cruel. And then if you want to present important, serious issues, then think perhaps about disadvantage, disability, inequality, and perhaps your main character is a victim overcoming difficulties. So think carefully about your main character and make sure that they link closely with the story and the story purpose. You also need to think about indirect characterization and you might, might have heard of something called show don't tell. So show don't tell is when you describe rather than just state. So she was feeling very excited. That's just stating, it's really obvious or explicit. Whereas if you said she bounded up the road in wide leaping strides, and as her scarf waved behind her, a huge grin spread across her smiling face. That's really describing how she's feeling and what she's doing rather than just stating, it's implicit, it's inferring it. 
So if your story were about something that's thrilling, exciting and entertaining, and perhaps people, someone has made a joke and everyone thought that the joke was funny, then instead of just saying, everyone thought the joke was funny, you would have a description like, tears streamed from the faces of the crowd, shoulders shook hard, and even the grumpiest of them cracked a huge smile. So you're describing what's happening rather than just stating it. If your story is more frightening and disturbing, you might be talking about a gang and some kind of um, Im impending violence. And so instead of saying the gang was frightening, you might have some description that's more implicit, indirect characterization. Each gang member had a red beaded tattoo on their hairy forearms, scar against their cheeks, scars against their cheek, and they held up sharp daggers that glinted in the moonlight. So it's something to disquiet and, and disturb your readers. And then if the characterization is something that's more serious, maybe perhaps topical, and you're presenting issues through your story, you might have something like his father was that sad as kind of a statement. It's just explicit telling us the implicit characterization, indirect characterization would be something like, although he tried to control the sobbing, sharp yelps escaped from his heaving chest, which was now covered with the dampness of his bitter tears. So can you see the difference there with just stating it, obviously, that's explicit and just telling us, whereas you show, you describe, and you really um, sh show and explain what's going on rather than just explicitly telling. Okay, let's talk about story structure and the narrative arc. So for a grade four, you will want your story to be interesting and exciting. And there'll be five key elements that you want to include. So you would have a narrative hook, which would grab the reader's attention at the beginning. It might be some kind of action that's going on before the journey. It might be dialogue around the journey. It might be description of the setting. Um, you're going to grab the reader's attention at the beginning because as a grade four candidate, you know that that's really key. The next aspect would be exposition. So you'd describe the setting, where they are, describe the characters, who's there, maybe provide some clues. So the reader starts thinking, ah, I know what's going on. So you're kind of foreshadowing what's going, what's happening, you're giving us some hints and clues of what's about to happen. Perhaps include a flashback. So we're building up a backstory and beginning to empathize with the character, the main character. The next stage is rising action. You can see in terms of the story map, the story hill, things are getting more difficult. So you would include surprises, things on the journey that are uncertain and unexpected. You might include obstacle, obstacles, challenges to overcome, complications and problems, crisis that they have to face head on and confusion, with worry and doubt going on. The climax is the peak of the action. You can see that there's intensity. This is the moment perhaps in the journey where things go drastically wrong, when we're not sure that we can recover it. Or maybe this is the sharp breathtaking in moment where we were shocked to find out this happened. It's a big revelation of something that we hadn't seen coming. And then the last part is the falling action. That means things are finally getting settled. We're going down the hill to have a resolution. So we're including some solutions. Things are getting a little bit better. We can see some um, things are being tied up and there are there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel. However, you may also introduce some new problems before you end strongly. So that's the five point narrative arc. Let's think about it if you were writing this story for a journey and let's think it's a journey to a wedding. So we're thinking about the narrative hook perhaps being that the car tires explode. So on the way to the wedding the bride and her chauffeur in um, are terrified because they hear the tires explode. There's a jolt and a jerk and they're worried. So this is the narrative hook to really get this idea that your readers are thrown straight into the action. In the exposition you may well describe the bride, 
the beautiful dress, perhaps as she's come out of the car, it's been splashed by the rain. You describe the chauffeur in his smart dark suit and peaked hat and the, the, the shining of the, the, the chrome and the leather of the wedding, um, the wedding car. And then you may well talk about um, as they are able to get back into the car, the chauffeur's able to fix the tire and put the spare tire on. Perhaps when they turn the radio on, they hear something about robberies in the area. So you're adding this dimension, this clue that may be significant later for the readers. And you're starting to foreshadow the fact that they're going to arrive at the church late. People might be angry, worried, disappointed even of what's going on. You may even include a flashback of the marriage proposal when the bride and her groom were talking. There was some kind of expectation of the marriage proposal. And then he gave her the ring, which was huge, a huge diamond. And she was really excited about the wedding. And this was the culmination of all their preparation and hard work. So at the beginning here, this is really building empathy for the bride, breeding, building empathy for her, her family. The rising action for this journey would be all these surprises as she's trying to ring to phone her father who's at the church. She can't get through to him. It keeps cutting off. Um, it keeps going to answer the answer phone and she's getting progressively more anxious as the journey continues. And then there's a complication. They go to the wrong church. It's the wrong St. Joseph's. It's the other St. Joseph's in a different part of town that the chauffeur hadn't realised and she was too preoccupied on her phone to, 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 to see that he'd taken these wrong turns. And then there's a the confusion when they get to the second church, the correct St. Joseph, that it actually looks abandoned. So at the end of her journey, when the bride comes out, perhaps she sees all of her guests tied up, perhaps this is the climax. And then in the falling action, she and the chauffeur are able to phone the police and they come and they're able to resolve the situation on her wedding day. So we've got some solutions for the problem, but perhaps the, the added problems is that one of the criminals is actually her fiance. And his, the beginning of his journey is that he's in the back of a police car beginning his journey to prison, okay? So if you if we just look at that story again, you can see the elements there that you, it's going to help you to secure the grade four. You're going to, you're making it generally interesting. You're making it generally relevant about a journey, the bride's journey and the confusion getting to the church. And then obviously her fiance's journey when he's arrested by the police to prison and beyond. You're making it interesting by using some descriptive detail, describe the bride and the chauffeur, describe the weather around her. You're adding those clues, which for structure, you're connecting the different events together so that readers generally are interested and they understand what's going on. And you've got a clear beginning, clear development and clear ending in terms of your structure. And as you're going, you're thinking about your vocabulary. You're not using childish words. You're really thinking carefully about your punctuation, making sure that at the end of the sentences, you're using them accurately. You're thinking about different types of sentences, using a question when she gets to the first church, why has he taken me here? Using exclamations, imperatives, quick, we need to get on and you're using a range of different sentences to explain what's happening to the to this bride at each stage of her journey and then in the resolution you're thinking perhaps of using more punctuation with the ellipsis the dot 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 to show that although her journey sadly has finished and her wedding is not what she wanted it to be her fiance's journey to prison will start so i hope that that's given you an understanding of how to secure a level four. You're looking at the marking criteria for the content and organization and for the technical accuracy. You're hoping to get around a high level three, level two and a low level three to secure roughly, very roughly, it has been for the last few years, that 21 marks out of 40.
You're thinking about the purpose, right? What do I want for my story? Is it thrilling and exciting? Is it disturbing and frightening? Is it exploring, ser exploring serious issue? You're thinking to make sure about characterization, that character is appropriate, but also they're using indirect characterization that's interesting and descriptive rather than just stating what's going on. You're also making sure that you're using the five point narrative an arc where you've got your exposition, your rising action, your climax and your resolution. I hope that this has helped you to feel confident to complete this assignment, write a story about a journey and to secure your grade four. Thank you for joining me.